Welcome to BMX Race Hub, rounds five and six of the National Series here at Cumbernauld in Scotland. Okay, so here we are, Cumbernauld, uh, rounds five and six in the National Series. We're about halfway through the series now, so uh, yeah, there's still quite a lot to play for, lots of rankings still to be sorted, points to be won, and of course, qualification spots for Worlds and things next year. Um, so yeah, quite a critical part of the series, of the season. Um, and of course, there's a lot of exams going on. Some people maybe haven't traveled, but there's still a lot of riders here. We've got uh, over 800 registered for this, uh, this weekend. Quite breezy on track, nice and sunny today. Looking forward to the racing when we get going. Uh, in the meantime, let's find some people to speak to. Okay, I'm here with Eric Esselmont um, from Andover and Team Air, um, talking about, yeah, talking about Team Air. So, been around a couple of years, well, maybe two or three years now. So, tell us, tell us about where it all began and why you set up Team Air, Eric. Okay, yeah, so uh, Team Air for us was more about um, engaging our riders at the club level, Andover BMX, uh, taking them to the next level at nationals. So um, it's more about, we had a lot of riders at the club that were doing nationals, weren't in any teams or anything. So it's more trying to put in a progressional, let's say, step uh, for them to come to nationals. So, so we set up Team Air um, based on Andover riders uh, that were doing nationals and um, sort of just giving them a vehicle to develop themselves at the national level. Yeah, good stuff. And um, obviously we work together on development centre stuff in the south region. And I know it obviously mirrors that. So there's a skills-based piece and obviously, like you say, the national level racing. I mean, there's a lot behind. It's not just about on track, is it? It's behind the scenes in terms of, you know, getting yourself prepared for that level of racing. And, you know, as you progress on looking to European and, and world championship type stuff as well, I guess. Yeah, we think, um, so all our riders that are in our team essentially are, are, very, are regulars at our club and um, they're all following like a, you know, let's say a, a, a training program that, that gets them there and, gets, and they're committed to, to that, um, to progress within, within the sport. Everyone knows what you have to do in terms of getting on the team. It's sort of, yeah, you've got to be a regular member, uh, first claim club. You have to attend training at least twice a week. Uh, uh, which is normally a Wednesday and a Saturday. Uh, we do have an additional session on Monday night as well now, which came out of us having floodlights in the winter, you know, uh, from um, midstream, putting in those latter floodlights are just amazing now. So that, that's really improved our facility um, and the ability to get more track time for our riders and coaching them. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank you very much, Eric. And uh, obviously we, we track progress and see you guys a lot anyway. But um, yeah, really good to see the progress on track and uh, good luck for the future. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. And just to say, you know, like BMX Race Hub coming along now, you know, from like our point of view as coaches, you know, it's a great resource um, and also for parents and kids to watch back, um, you know, every race, you know, they're not, it's not just highlights, but the, you know, the quality of your filming and coverage is really good. So we're happy to support you and everyone else should do the same. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that. That was unscripted. <laughs> okay, here with Dave at B73. Dave, our, um, our last check-up, sorry, check-in, yeah. uh, was uh, exactly, you, you reminded us, exactly 12 months ago 12 at Platfields. So. We Platfields, yeah, fantastic event. And, uh, yeah, you managed to get me in front of the microphone and uh, back again 12 months later for another chat. So confidence is building with the camera. Well done on that front. Um, and, yeah, how's it going? Has it, has it been the last 12 months for you? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, I just, as I said last time, I just love being involved in the sport. Um, the presence, the brand appears to have, feels part of the family. Um, just continue to do what I do and uh, thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah. Nice one. I know you support a couple of riders and that as well with um, bits of bits of kit. And uh, yeah, what do you think on the race season, on the race scene this year? How's how's it going for you? I think it kind of feels like it's stepped up again. It has. Yeah, yeah. I, I think year on year uh, the events uh, get bigger, better. The racing's fantastic. Um, yeah, I think 
BMX in the UK is in a really good place, really good place, yeah. All right. And um, any developments, any news you want to tell us about? Well, exclusive, uh, very soon we're going to be seeing a BMX hub, race hub merchandise line uh, that you'll be able to get exclusively here at B73. So that's going to be something to look forward to uh, going forward. All right, well, thanks very much. You've got some customers, so we'll let you go. Oh, fantastic. Go and grab some money, sell some product. Cheers, guys. Okay, here with SJ, Sarah Jane Nichols, almost fresh back from the World Championships. It was a few weeks ago now, um, but obviously um, it went quite well, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I was more than happy. I was happy to have um, just made the final, to be quite truthful. That was, I said that was my goal, was to, I mean, for everyone's goal was to try and make a world final. Um, that's actually getting the final and then, sorry, you can see I got the yeah. finished second in the World Championships, which was quite incredible, more than I could have ever dreamed of at this stage. Yeah, really good. And um, it's great to, great to see it happen as well. It's, um, I know we taught, well, last year at Gosport and it was your first sort of proper season back after quite a break. And we talked about ice hockey padding and things like that, <laughs> what the, the padding you need in BMX really. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I suppose, you know, almost wildest dreams, but kind of came true. Exactly. Um, like I said, ne never ever dreamed it would have happened. I mean, even actually being back on a BMX has been, <laughs> I mean, that's been actually quite amazing for me to be quite truthful. I never even thought I'd be racing a BMX again after 30 odd years, let alone racing, let alone going to America and coming second in the World Championships. Uh, really good. And I see, um, we were just talking about it, the Weetabix uh, World's um, logo from whatever that was, 86, wasn't it? That's right. So um, I have Mr. Baxter for, to thank for my plate. Um, and he came up with a special logo. That was the um, emblem for the 1986 World yeah. Championships. And obviously the one above it was the, the Rock Hill. So it's a really special number plate. And obviously going forward as I get older, it will go on the wall in my, in my hallway. <laughs> yeah, with the hotshot business. And I know some of the guys involved uh, in that were there as well, weren't they? So and what, what's, the, what's the plan now? I mean, obviously the world's your oyster. So um, what's the plan? Uh, so the plan, I mean, obviously going forward, we've got the rest of this season to go yet the national season obviously we're here in, in um, Scotland it's going okay so far we've got the final to come up later on um, and then yeah we've got Manchester see how I get on a national hopefully qualify for next year's worlds which are in Denmark so the aim is as long as I'm in one piece to go to Denmark next year and see how we get on I mean a 50 plus ladies class would be amazing so obviously it'd be another year older next year so it gets tougher all the time but that, that's the goal, and the Brits, all, the, all these big events coming up. Um, you know, I set myself little targets to try and do well, and, and so that's it. I just keep, keep going as long as I can at the moment. I'm enjoying it. Well, I think you're going a bit quicker, actually, yeah, quicker and quicker. So um, real, real inspiration for, for the younger ones as well, and, um, yeah, keep it up, all right? Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Okay, here with uh, Rich Eames. So um, just catching up after... It's been a pretty crazy break, actually, since the last national. We've had the Worlds and then the Europeans yeah. early this year because of the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, lots of points up for grabs for the elite teams as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, a lot going on. What do you what do you make of it? Well, there's been so much, like, you know, going out to Rock Hill for Worlds and then having Verona for the Euros two weeks later and, you know, everything in between the drama of the Olympics points chase for, you know, GB and USA having that battle. So there's been so many storylines the last few weeks and some of them have worked out well for Great Britain and some haven't. Yeah, it was um, it was a difficult World Championships for uh, for GB up and down the age groups. A few stood out, but the weather wasn't exactly our friend, I guess, on a couple of occasions. No, it wasn't our friend. Certainly on the second day, I got absolutely drowned from like minute one. Spent seven hours stood there in soggy shoes and soaking wet clothing. So yeah, it was a right bundle of fun that was. But you know, it's World Championships. You've just got to take what you're given, and sometimes it works out for you, sometimes it doesn't. I think it's a good opportunity for riders to show when they get in a situation like that and they're at a major championships and the weather's against them and things aren't going their way have they got the mental fortitude yeah. and some riders have and some riders haven't you've just really got to take what you're given you know run with it do the best you can and like i say you can overcome other people who don't have such a strong mindset yeah and um and read the rule book uh i mean there was a bit of controversy i don't know about how you felt but um when i saw uh, when i saw the croc cowboy boots i felt a little bit unwell yeah, I felt slightly sick as well. I mean, gee whiz, you know, I wouldn't mind a cowboy hat. It'll just keep my bald head from getting sunburned. But there's no way on God's earth I would wear, you know, 
cowboy crocs. Anyway, uh, and then the Euros more recently. Yeah. Um, yeah, lots lots happening there. Slightly better event for for GB riders overall, I guess, with yeah. some real standouts. Yeah, there was. I think Emmy Seawood was you know superb getting that Euro two and uh, Brooke Fawcett as well Euro three. You know Jess Marriott Euro four, James Bibby Euro four. There was a lot of standout rides in those younger age groups. Obviously, Freya Chalice taking a win, and I think Elsa won on the cruiser as well. So there was plenty to shout about. I think at the European Championships, and it just goes to show sure what strength we've got coming through I think we're still a little bit behind the French in some respects but you know it was it was a good Euros you know for our younger riders and yeah the future's bright yeah and fewer crooks as well which is a good thing so um, yeah I mean the French they go to BMX school as I understand it yeah. so that's pretty cool um, yeah and then the rest of the season we're halfway through now in the national series still loads to go yeah we're going to be like done by the end of July which I find absolutely yeah. insane and then we've got the Brits in August and then we're you know we're pretty much done for a full season so you know it's going to be quite you know hectic I think in the next few weeks with having you know Birmingham and Manchester and this that and the other but it allows riders to get into a rhythm of just being under pressure in those like big race situations for a sustained period of time so there are positives to it all I mean obviously BMX families you know the travel budget isn't like completely um, you know unlimited and that kind of stuff so it is a bit of a rough time in that respect but I think we can kind of develop as a nation from having these riders uh, sorry having these races so close together and you know and again it's what you make of it you've got to push through and and, and roll with the punches. Yeah, for sure. So after a bit of a break for the Worlds and the Europeans, uh, we've got three nationals on the trot. This is this is the first of three. Uh, feels like being on the being on the road for a bit, but um, yeah, looking forward to the racing the rest of today, this weekend, and then of course the next two nationals as well. Junior men hit the track, heading for the turn. Looking like the two riders out of Peckham have had great gates. They've been battling all day long. Four sits on the inside. Here comes Miller Hughes in and out of the first corner. It is Danny. Jake Monfort leading this one out. Monfort in there in that one spot. And Zander Mavawani right in there in two. Hunting him down like prey in and out of that second corner. It's looking good for Peckham. One and two at the moment. Who's that in there in three? Still looking good for four sit. Miller Hughes in there in four. That looks like Louis Tay Edwards in five. And James Sankey in six. But it's all about Peckham out front Danny Jake Monfort takes this junior men win Xander Mavawani right in there behind him okay here with uh, junior men winner today uh, Danny Jake Monfort we've seen you before this is win number two of the season uh, how's it feeling um, feels really good uh, second ever national win feels good well, it's a pretty good time to start winning, obviously, when you hit junior men. And, um, yeah, looked like it was a decent gate and then game over. Yeah, got a really good gate. Um, had the inside line. And from there, it was good. Yeah, really smooth, really good uh, track. You said you liked the third straight. I'm not sure about that table on off, but you, you dealt with it. Yeah, it's um, good. I like the rhythm. Yeah. Nice one. All right, well, well done, mate. Really good riding today. Thank you. The final, final of the day hits the track. Looking like Marnham and Strickland on the inside, headed for the turn. Strickland's not giving him any room, but Marnham takes it anyway. Charles Marnham leads it out. He's getting busy as he exits turn number one. Strickland's in there in two. Harrison Bell's in there in three. Dean Reeves in four. Oh, how on earth the old stayed up right. Hunt threw it under, went beneath two of them. Fletcher's in there in four. Marnham, Strickland, Hunt, one, two, three, in and out of the final turn. Look Looking like Mark Fletcher's going to round out the top four spots, but Josh Marnham takes another super class win. And here with super class uh, winner today. Uh, we spoke to you last time out as well. Uh, Josh Marnham, yeah. really, really good. Well, it looked like a really good lap. I know you weren't happy with it, but you never are because there's always something you can improve. But yeah, yeah. a bit sketchy, you said. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was an OK lap. I, um, I didn't have the best gate, like I wheelie to the bottom of the start hill. And Kyle got a really good one. And I, I thought he had the lead. Like he was he was ahead of me. And then I think he made a mistake going over the trip into the, the corner. And it just allowed me to go through. Um, and then, yeah, just I feel like I kept it clean and just, yeah, I was safe out front. So, yeah, it was, it was an okay lap. Yeah. An okay lap and a win. That's, we'll yeah, take that. Yeah, we'll yeah. take that. So, um, yeah, you've been pretty busy all over the planet, uh, racing here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Um, I know you've had, yeah, you've had some good laps and some uh, less good laps. But, yeah, how's it been the last few weeks? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not been that great. It's been okay. Um, there was just a lot of tr a big gap uh, after Cycle Park, and then it would would have been Verona, which was last weekend. Um, Verona just it didn't go to plan. 
Um, was, you know, was pretty quick in practice, had some really good laps, felt good, but just couldn't put it together on the race day. Um, again, just letting the nerves get to me and stuff, but I've got a couple more races uh, ahead of me next weekend, the weekend after, and I think the two weekends after that, so it's going to be quite busy. Um, but yeah, it's been okay recently, uh, a bit up and down, but yeah, for the most part, it's been good. All right, mate. Well, um, that Verona, third straight, especially, was super challenging, real big, deep jumps there. And um, yeah, been watching you over the last couple of weeks, looking looking really good. And uh, yeah, like you say, a packed programme over the next few weeks. So uh, yeah, let's uh, look forward to seeing you guys on track again tomorrow, of course, and then over the next few weeks. All right, good luck. Brilliant. Cheers. Thank you. OK, well, that's the end of uh, racing day one, round five uh, of the BMX National Series here at Cumbernauld. Um, fast is probably the word of the day. There were some really, really good moves in the corners, uh, some excellent racing, a few new E and W plates on display, which is always good to see. And yeah, looking forward to more of the same tomorrow. Welcome to day two at Cumbernauld, round six of the National Series. Uh, weather's different, a bit less windy. We've got a bit more cloud, um, hopefully a bit more sun, but it might sprinkle with rain later, so could be interesting. The berms are all drying out from the overnight rain, and uh, yeah, practice is about to finish, and we go live with racing very soon. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good day. Okay, here with Emmy Seawoods. Uh, Emmy, you've been pretty busy the last few weeks. Um, world champs and then European champs. So yeah, tell us about how it's been. Uh, how it's been going? It's been going pretty good. Picked up my fifth world plate and my fifth European plate, so it's quite good. Yeah. Nice one. Um, so yeah, so tell us about the world champs. That track, it was. It looked pretty smooth actually to me. Um, really rideable. Um, and uh, yeah, quite quite an interesting. Well, quite interesting when it got a bit wet, I suppose, out there. Yeah, it was very different to what we have in the UK, but it was really smooth and good to run. It was pretty good when it was wet too. Quite grippy, smooth, run really nice. Probably one of my favourite tracks now. Yeah, it did seem to flow really well, and the surface was like it's almost like Manchester indoor, I think, wasn't it? Because yeah. kind of like a sealed surface, and then. Very different, <laughs> uh, the European Championships in Verona, the surface is completely different, um, but again, a good run there. So tell us about that one. Yeah, that one was good. Struggled all day, a bit tough. And then in the final, it threw a massive thunder, so pulled out a good one in the final, so it was quite good. So, um, yeah, so that's world number three and European number two again. Um, consistency for sure, which is really good. Um, so tell us a bit about, about Hard Knocks, you're on the Hard Knocks team. Um, and what goes what goes on there? We just saw you doing some reaction stuff with the tennis ball, which I recommend to all the all the kids out there who are looking to improve their reaction times. Uh, really simple stuff, but yeah, tell us about everything else that you that you do um, with the Hard Knocks team and the and the coaching and the training. Yeah, it's good. We got some training on Mondays and Thursdays, which is really good. Get to train train with James Cliver on that. And then in the tent, it's good atmosphere too. We do some training camps everywhere, really. And yeah. Yeah, nice work. And um, yeah, it involves a lot of travel, obviously, and you've got school and everything else going on. Um, what What are the plans the next uh, next couple of years? And obviously, racing with the boys at the moment, um, showing them how it's done quite a lot of the time. I really like like watching that. There's uh, no quarter given in the corners, which is brilliant. Obviously, that's good for for the European and world racing. But yeah, what's the plans over the next uh, few years then? Em? Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in nationals. Really, hoping to go a championship in the next few years. And then with the Worlds and the Euros, just hoping to get my world plates and European plates, hopefully pick up a win. Nice work. Well, um, yeah, I'm no doubt that you've got that capability. And, um, yeah, it's been really good watching you this year. And good luck in the rest of the season and into next year. Yeah, thank you. Here with, uh, here with Andy McCoy again. I think we spoke to you at Cyclo Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've only got the one bike, I think, haven't you? Do, yeah, do yeah. everything on it. I could try to do some things on it, you know what I mean? It's uh, when I can, but yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad. I ride, prefer riding this bike than the cruise, a bit less sketchy. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, slightly bigger wheels, yeah. And uh, some nice nice road tyres you got on there as well. I have, I've had to, uh, the common stairs are getting a bit um, hefty with the tape measure, so to keep it legal, I don't like to uh, 
annoy the common stairs. I've uh, done a bit of measuring and I made sure I've got skinny wheels, so these are definitely under 26 inches, so it's a legal bike. Well, that's good. So we, we probably need to make sure your handlebars aren't too wide either. Yeah, you read that, Reg. I'm going to measure them as well. I'll just hold my hands here. Obviously, under 29 inches, definitely. Um, Rob, obviously, in that A final yesterday, he didn't feel the handlebars at all in that second berm. There was definitely no comments being made as we uh, battled in the A final, but it's all good, and it? It's all good. In this category, it's... Uh, we were, all, we were all just having a laugh, a bit of banter, and it's, uh, yeah, we'd like to get around in one piece, innit? So. Yeah, well done. Andy made the air yesterday. That's pretty special. Well done. Yeah, well, I hope to see another day, another ray, but Sunday's always a little bit tired, innit? But we'll see how we get on. See how we get on, mate. Same for everyone. Yeah, defo, defo. Here with Steph. Steph, uh, I, I, well, I, I'm going to say that you're in charge because you're in charge, even though you don't think you're in charge. You're definitely in charge. How's it going? Uh, for, sorry, from Cumbernauld, uh, Cumbernauld Club, obviously the organisers of this brilliant event. I mean, I already say I'm in charge. Des will kill me. But I, I, I help a lot at the club. We do loads of social media coverage and I hope everybody is actually like to social media coverage, the build up to the event. It's nice to so, see so many riders that have travelled from the south, from the north of England. I think what we've got about 800 riders here this weekend. Um, riding really, really strong. The racing's been brilliant. Commentary's been excellent. I think just in general, like it's so good to see the track filled. Given that we're such a small well you call us a region right but we're a country given that we're such a small country this doesn't get filled that often in terms of many events every year so it's great to see the atmosphere and the buzz and all the vendors here um, we've did like our own printed like t-shirts and volunteers and jumpers and we've also did some like recyclable cups for the commissars and people to buy so that we're trying to like reduce waste and things like that people can reuse stuff it's it's been a great it's been a great weekend so far yeah, yeah cheers and uh, i'd never call you a region it's definitely a country especially next weekend when we start playing football i was <laughs> going to wear my england shirt but i thought i might get chased oh. out of town so um but yeah uh, it's been a great event we've enjoyed it obviously with motos on day two were behind us and um yeah i mean there's, uh, it's what goes on behind the scenes that I think people, a lot of people don't see and the volunteers, the time that the volunteers put into these events and um, you know, it's not to be underestimated but the more the merrier, the more the people that step forwards, yeah. the easier it is to deliver, yeah? We have, a, we're really lucky, we have a great volunteer base and um, we've probably put in over a thousand hours this week alone to get the track ready, maintenance get it all dressed, get it looking good. Disneyland, as we call it, the back of the pens, has worked really, really well. I think most riders like it. It creates an even flow. You can get as many practice laps in as, as, as you want, because that's, that's what the riders want. They want to have as many practice laps as they can. They want as many gates as they can. The weather has been great. Um, slightly windy, but the rain stayed away for racing. Um, it's just a shame we didn't see the pro jump yesterday. Hopefully we might see them jump in the pro today, but fingers crossed. I know there's a black cloud, but we'll keep it going and hopefully the sun shines. Thanks very much. Well, yeah, great event. Weather's all right. Yeah. And um, good luck in the football. <laughs> Aye, OK. Hopefully Scotland win. Not. <laughs> OK, here with, uh, here with Taya. Um, Taya, so... This weekend, uh, you're the only one who registered for Championship Women. I, don't, I know there's a couple of injuries. There's a few away to an exams as well, isn't there? Um, but just to explain that um, to viewers, um, so that's why there's no Championship category as such. You've been merged in with 17-plus uh, uh, women. Um, just took a moto win there on day two, really good. So, um, but tell us about the Europeans. Um, pretty, pretty good in the end. Yeah, um, so I got to the semis. I was trying to focus on um, myself instead of other people around me and I'm happy with the result but I still need to work a bit on my mental the mental side because I kind of just froze in the semi but um, yeah happy with the result but just not the performance in the semi but. Uh, it was really good and uh, junior women um, self-funded place and um, I just thought it was great a really good result overall appreciate you you know everyone always is their be their biggest um, critic aren't they as, as, as racers um, but completely get that psychological side of things it's a it's a big event on the big hill and all the rest of it so yeah um, what's what's next in your uh, in your plan then um, well I'm I'm going to most of the euro rounds this year um, trying to get on the Olympic development squad this year so I can get a bit more time on the 80 meter um, hopefully get selected for the world's next year in uh, Copenhagen so yeah just trying to 
keep building up the strength and speed. So. Yeah, well, good work, and um, the journey continues. Obviously, spent a lot of time with you this winter in the indoor um, various reasons on the track there, and um, yeah, really good progress. Great jumping, great bike skills, and working on the power. So good luck. Thank you. Uh, here with Alex from uh, MK Milton Keynes BMX Club. Um, yeah, I, I used to race at the track in the in the eighties. Yeah. It's been on the same location, hasn't it? You said yeah. it's your fortieth. Uh, Anniversary 40th this birthday, year. 40th birthday this year, yeah. And we're celebrating with a pool party. Yeah, pool party, swimming pool party. Yeah. It's a really unfortunate set of circumstances. And um, I know you've been flooded a couple of, well, three or four times in the last couple of years. And yeah. I know you just up, upgraded the track, repaired it, and then it got flooded again. So, yeah, what's the situation at the moment? Well, it's happening over and over again. We have, uh, it's built on a floodplain, helpefully, so it floods quite a lot. Um, we had the worst one we've ever had back in January. Storm Hank absolutely trashed it. Yeah. It was closed for six months after that. Um, we finally started repairs. We got a grant from Sport England uh, to start doing the repairs last month. Um, we started the repairs on the Monday and on the Wednesday it flooded again. Um, we had to start all over again. We have literally this weekend just finished putting it all back together. So it's just waiting for sign off from the, uh, the insurance company. Everyone say it's safe. And hopefully we can then uh, start riding on it again in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but it's only a matter of time until it goes under again. We've had to cancel you know, one summer regional, we've had to cancel two winter regionals. You know, do we want to plan a winter race series knowing it might go underwater again at any moment once it starts raining? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, it, you know, unfortunately, it's one of those um, situations where, you know, the weather is getting a bit more extreme. There's more rainfall when it rains and more intensity. Obviously, on a floodplain, like you say, is slightly unhelpful. Um, but it's been there a while and it, had, it wasn't flooding for a long time and now it is. So, you know, they, they, things change over time. So you've got a change.org um, out. I don't know if you can remember the address of it, but yeah, give, give people a bit of an idea of how they can help. Yeah, well, we love our track. It's our home. We want to be back there. But the flooding is getting more severe and more frequent. So it's always flooded now and again in the past, but now it's happening badly every time. Um, so we're launching a campaign to build a new track, still in MK, but somewhere drier. Uh, the council are on board. We've got a lot of the general election candidates are on board. We just need to show how much support there is, not just in the city, but across the whole BMX community. Because we think if we build something decent, people are going to travel to it. People are going to come. People are going to want to be there all year round. Um, so if people want to support the campaign, just go to change.org forward slash Milton Keynes BMX track. Um, sign the petition there. And if we can show that the whole BMX community is behind us, I think that'll make a real difference. Really good shout. Um, there's some great venues and facilities in and around Milton Keynes, um, the Snow Dome uh, and things like that. So it would make a lot of sense to have a really good track there. It's a really accessible place, part of the world. You know, um, fully support that. I think it would be great to see a really top venue there. Um, so yeah, good luck with your campaign, right? And everyone, please sign the, the petition. Okay. Here we are inside line with, uh, with Rich and Lewis. Um, well, it's warmer today, it's less windy today. Uh, day two of the National Series here. Um, the track's running faster, I reckon, as well today, it seems to be. Um, yeah, so uh, what, what's really stood out for you today, Rich? Um, I think the racing today has been super tight, especially in the later rounds. And uh, it's the third and fourth straights and the last corner that's been a real kind of an eye opener for us because you know, we, myself and Lewis have noticed as commentators that anybody who leaves any semblance of a gap in that final corner and you're just going to get done. It's a real kind of evening and we've seen people's positions change by maybe two, possibly even three. And it's all down to that last corner and there's plenty going on on the third straight as well. It's really getting mixed up. Yeah, I agree with that. And I th one, of the, one of the riders was saying to me that with the on-off on the table, it actually makes tracking across the straight quite difficult. Um, so hence some, some people leaving gaps maybe because they're having to think even harder about that rhythm section. Yeah, I mean, the third straight's really technical. It looks like a relatively simple straight, but obviously when you start riding it at them sort of speeds that some of these guys are going, obviously there's a lot of riding going off. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of skill involved with that straight. And then obviously you've got to start thinking about race lines and, and other riders coming around you along the track. So yeah, it's, it's a really technical third straight. Yeah, it's a great track here, and it's perceptively, uh, um, rather the opposite. It's, <laughs> it gives you the impression of a short track, because it flows well, but it's actually quite a long way around. Yeah, it is a long way around. You know, there's a, there's a lot of pedalling on those first and second straights. And, you know, your legs get full of lactic acid as you get to the third one, and then you've got to negotiate your way through quite a technical rhythm section and deal with the last straight. So it's more challenging here than it looks at Cumbernauld, but, you know, that's the way the track's been built, and it makes for some excellent racing.
Yeah, word for um, word for Emmy Seawood. In fact, in the last corner, in the quarter final, I don't know it quite worked in the end, but um, but she had a proper move on there with strong elbows because we've done a bit of a feature on Emmy this time. So yeah, she's going well. I mean, even yesterday, she made a move. I think it was in the quarter final yesterday where she went from I think it was fifth to third in that last turn, something ridiculous like that. Yeah, she's she's really quick. Obviously, racing with the boys can be a little bit more difficult. Obviously, some of them are growing a little bit quicker than maybe Emmy would, uh, even quicker than each other. So she's doing really well, holding her own, obviously making moves, has a really good first straight on her. She's really competitive and obviously she's had a great season so far already. Yeah, for sure, with the E2 and the W3, really good, really good run again. Um, yeah, so halfway through, just over halfway through now, I suppose, technically, um, we've got a couple of national weekends coming up, pretty intense, and then we're into the gap for the Olympics in the summer. So uh, what's, your, uh, what's your top tip for the, uh, for the Olympics then, Rich? Um, I think it'll just be, you know, as intense as the Olympics always is. It's kind of almost a different kind of race because you know all the eyes of the world are upon the Olympians and that kind of stuff and they don't it doesn't seem to have the same feel or the same vibe as a World Cup it's 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 very different but by the same token it not something's not going to change first rider across the line wins a gold medal so you know the the actual mechanics of it stay the same even if the feel is slightly different but you know we're hoping that uh, whoever our GB riders are who go obviously best going to be going but whoever our uh, you know male representative with whoever they get confirmed as the pick I hope they do a really good job of it and you know the but they're definitely going to have the work cut out against the French and the Dutch. Yeah, they were looking good in that lovely French barn uh, a few months ago when they had the test event there. So, yeah, fingers crossed for that. All right, well, thanks, guys. Um, great racing again, as always, on this, uh, on this fa fantastic track um, as part of the National Series. So, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the season. Well, so far for these guys, I've got no idea how the points stack up, but we'll just take a look at the lap anyway. Danny J. Monforte into the turn, Harvey Fawcett in there as well. Oh, Xander Vamel, Manny Wright in there in that second spot. Miller Hughes in four, Louis T. Edwards in five. Big battle out from the Danny J. Monforte just holding off the attentions of Xander Vamel. Danny Wright as he stands right now. Fawcett's about five by lengths back. He's in there in three, but it is Peck and BMX Club out in front. Danny Jake Monforte, Xander Mavel, Vanny Wright for the two. Oh, here with uh, Danny Jake Monfort, uh, day one winner, day two winner at Cumbernauld, and it's your third win this year. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling really good. I don't know what else to say, really. Well, you got your breath back, so that's good. But, um, yeah, I, I know, you know, we were just talking about your coaches and uh, who's supporting you, so just give them a shout-out. List those guys, yeah? Um, I'd like to say, say thanks to all my coaches, um, Nigel White, We've got Trey White, CK Flash, and Mark Seaman as well. So thanks to them, and thanks to my mum and dad who support me and take me everywhere. Yeah, it's quite a role of honour there. Uh, head of logistics, mum and dad, and uh, all the rest of it. So yeah, nice one. Well done, Danny Jake. All right, and good luck rest of the year. Right, last race, here we go. These are the super glass heading down the hill. Martin Reeves and Strickland into the turn. Oh, one, two, right, is going down. Harrison Bell hits the deck yet again. Callum Strickland out there in one. Marnham in two. Who's got the three? It's Dean Reeves. He's tracking him down the straight. Is he going to be able to pick him off? No, it is George Hunt out of Ice Bikes. Mark Fletcher in there in four, but Callum Strickland doing it for Stay Strong, taking the win. Martin for two, Hunt for three. Okay, here with uh, with Cal Strickland, uh, winner of uh, today's Superclass uh, event, and it was a real event. That first straight was uh, pretty busy in the first corner as well. Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, I had a really good start from seven, and the inside is usually so important here to get a. I mean, whole shot in from seven with that, with those riders on the inside was going to be really hard. I need a perfect start, but I did get one. And uh, you just got to kind of not look back because it's so wide. You've really got to just aim right. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I did. And luckily nobody snuck underneath. Yeah, we covered that in the track guide. It's, uh, it, it's not just a double width track. It's a very wide double width track you've got to get across. Um, but that course gives you a really interesting line into the first corner and there was a lot of action in there. Yeah, it's, it is a, it's a really nice turn, especially when it's bone dry and you can just hit it and it sets up for the pro straight really well. It's a little bit different if it's amateur side, but um, luckily it was open today because it wasn't quite as windy as yesterday and uh, you can really just 
hit it absolutely full speed. You don't have to tap your brake or anything like that. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice run out. And luckily, uh, I got the pro set pretty nice as well. So. Well, well, that helps because there's grass in the middle of these ones as there is at Birmingham as well. So, um, yeah, all right, well done. Really good lap and uh, look forward to seeing you racing the rest of the year. Thank you very much, John. Cheers. OK, what a weekend. Uh, it really warmed up today, literally warmed up today on day two. Really lovely day. Uh, the racing was as you expect now with the National Series off the scale. It was just really good. Lots of top moves actually in the last corner in particular we talked about that earlier on um, a huge thank you to Cumbernauld Centurions brilliant event that they ran here huge am amount of hours put in by the volunteers and there's, these events don't happen without that input so thank you for those guys we're six rounds in now and four to go uh, on the Lloyds Bank BMX National Series uh, so yeah the rest of the the rounds for those that have raced all of them are you know if you score more points then uh, then you're going to uh, improve your position so all still to play for uh, thanks to the channel supporters uh, british cycling crucial bmx and of course nx teamwear as well so that's it see you trackside again soon